Chia Bemi. Um, Axe is, is an architectural firm. We are mainly um, consulting, so design and engineering. And uh, we also design and build, and then we develop. So, yeah. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> a, a, a crazy creative guide to running a successful business. We tend to be um, come across to others a bit in our own zone, creatives. I'm sure all of you can identify. So next slide, please. So, um, well, we all well know how we are naturally wired to be a certain way. Um, I'm sure most of us here are in that right zone there of the brain have a very dominant right side, and then a few may be on the left side. So yeah, you can see from even the imagery there that we are a bit, uh, we're quite different. Uh, on the other side, it's like my husband, Dr. Bem, they are very, and then this side is me, all over the place. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the next one. So yeah, creativity defined. I'm not sure I need to define that for most of the people here. But basically, we are those people that are seeing things nobody else sees. It's all in our head. And then somehow we have to interpret it for the next person to see and understand. That is what we are. We create. Everything we are doing was not there. And then now we've done it and it's there. So that's the kind of people we are. We are in our own zone. Next slide, please. So I always say design is design, whether it's fashion, food, architecture, whatever. The principles are there. They are the same. They run through all creative, so dance, designing cars, whatever. It's, the principles remain the same. And I think that's, it's, it's core to what um, is happening at MeSH, for example, because there are so many different disciplines here. But I'm sure we can all understand certain things a certain way because our principles is baseline. If we go to the next one. Yeah, but architecture, that's a bit schizophrenic because here you are, I mean, before this thing comes, you have to have all this imaginative, all those things happening in your head. And at the same time, you have to be very, uh, uh, on the other side, your, your left side has to be working very well, you know, because at the end of the day, it's also a science. It's an art and it's a science. And um, if you go to the next slide, please. And uh, in, in my office, I, we say the brick and mortar, that's the science. And the art is the experience. It's the art that gives the experience to the building. So that's how you go to a place and see two buildings built out of the same material, everything. But one will connect with you more than the other because there's an art behind it so that you cannot um, detach the arts or the science from the other. Um, some Robin Matthews said design is where science and art, they break even, really. So for us, um, it's a bit, uh, you have to have a half and half. If one is not too strong, it's a bit uh, deficient. But next one, please. So turning your creativity into a career your passion into a profession. Um, this can be a difficult one for people like us. Because at the end, I mean, he was explaining how this suck thing he's doing, I, I saw it, I connected with it. And someone asked that question. It's not really about it being nice or not nice. But at the end, the person saw it. The person felt something from it. And that is already, like he said, a dialogue. So, but is he selling it? Did he get, did he get money for the sack? Or did, you know, it's, it's like, it's not a commodity. So this is where our challenge is, how to make our arts, let's say a commodity. So next slide. Well, first of all, you should be doing what you love. If you are not doing what you love, you will not survive. Um, so like I said, I don't have business. I'm not a business guru, so I can't give you business uh, thing, but I can tell you my experience. I did not have capital either. I did not have a business plan. 
I was moving with intuition. <laughs> I did not have a business plan, but there's a, there's a point where you have to start. If you don't start, it's not coming. You understand? And thankfully, we are people who create. So your, ha your hands have a possibility to bring you something. You understand? So start. Don't, if even you are already in... in uh, and I like that you said with yours as well, you were still in the creative to generate that income. When I was in secondary school, I would uh, pester my mates. When my money finishes, I'll be making everything from posters to folders, anything. Just And you do it and you get the response. People like it. They pay something small for it. You're on your way out of Brokey. But that's it. That's, that's the advantage we have, that we can use our hands to get something. Next slide, please. And then brand your craft. My children are here. <laughs> brand your craft. Um, I think, and this is something, that's why I started to kind of um, discuss uh, how, how we started. You have to have a philosophy you, you believe strongly in and you move with. Sometimes, because of money, you may find yourself doing something you don't believe in. And once you start doing that, you don't believe in it, it is not you, it's not a reflection. Well, whatever you do, it's a reflection of you. So you have to be very cautious what you do because at the end of the day, that is going to be, a, a, what do you call it? a testament of what you are capable of doing. So you have to brand yourself. When you discover what it is you stand for, you move, you move with it. Sometimes, some works, you may have to let it go because it doesn't fall in your philosophy. It doesn't fall with your brand. It's, it's a bit um, tricky, but I can tell you that I did that. Next slide, please. And then there's the issue of professionalism. Unfortunately, a lot of us tend to be all creative and uh, the professional aspect can be a bit uh, challenged. But you must realize that if you are bringing yourself as a, um, quote, a commodity, someone is going to pay money for what you are doing, you have to come across as worth what they are going to pay you. So, um, Everything from uh, your timing, your things like this. You may, not have, you may not have everything, but in your capacity, what you are able to do to come across, show your competence and your professionalism, it is, it is key. And that is maybe um, a bit of a child, like I said, for those of us who just want to be there and make our arts and thrive in it. Then when we have to eat, somebody looks at us and has to give us money for that thing. Um, next slide, please. And then there's integrity. Very, very important. In our, I don't know if um, in your, in other disciplines this happens, but in our field, this is something you have, you, you cannot, do, you can't compromise because you always have people, and especially we are architects, so you have contractors and so and so, you know, suppliers trying to push you with something to get something for them. Because we tend to have a lot of um, power in decision making when it comes to the construction industry, and you will always have them wiggling around you. When you set yourself apart that, no, this doesn't happen with me, you will go further because as you are growing, some of these things will just come and cut you short because you are then one day at a tender with contractors who someone has given you something over there you collected it and then here you are having to judge i mean it's it's as for integrity so yeah you take responsibility accountability competence and that comes together you know with this inter next slide please and another key area invest in your craft there are things we have done as a company, and some of my colleagues are here, who, I mean, they will tell you, a lot of architects would not do. If you don't invest in what you are doing, <coughs> you can't expect someone else to invest in it. Um, our 3D printer is sitting out there. 
this, was it two years ago? Well, at that time, even the concept of 3D was very strange, but this was something we wanted to explore. It cost something. Yes, we did it. We spent every year, as many people in the office as possible, are sent out to international engagements like this. We, we have to, we have, the money, the, whatever we are making goes back into building ourselves. I mean, we are only five years now. Um, I don't think we are at the reaping stage yet, but as much as possible, try to invest in what you are doing. There's so much out there, so much. There are people uh, like this, for example. Well, this we didn't pay for, but there are things you will pay for. But anything you spend, I think, on knowledge, on your company or your um, development, I don't think it's a waste. It's actually a benefit. So invest as much as possible in your crafts. We do so much. Um, next slide. And then focus on the big picture. So, um, like I said, uh, we are 30 in the office, 12 of us are architects, there is um, technicians, support staff, things like this. When I say this somewhere, it's like, all those people, are you paying all these people? What? It's a chicken and egg. If you are not building the capacity, if you don't have the capacity, there's a, a level of work you can take. If it's, it's just, it's, it's a back and forth. You have to build it to get it. And once you get it, it should be able to support the people who are doing this. So it's, you either do it or you don't, but you have to focus on it. And for me, uh, we have, like I said last week, I, well, last week I haven't been around. I have gone to see things. We cannot even compete internationally because of the small, 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 small sizes of things we are doing. You are going to architectural firms there. 300 people, 1,000 people. When they show you a project, like I was showing my projects happily, and they show project participants, it's amazing. Why won't these companies progress? And we will be here, and they'll bring all these people back here to do the work here. Not that we don't have architects here. We have wonderful architects here, but the capacity is not there. So for us like this, we, we are looking at the big picture. Sometimes working your way out there, of course, is it's difficult, but if you lose sight of that big picture, you won't, you won't, you can't risk getting there. Exactly, when you have to do something that will move you to the next stage, you will uh, back out because you think you lost that that focus that this is where we are trying to get to. Next slide, please. And then, of course, finally, you need a firm foundation. For me, that's my faith, <laughs> and uh, I mean. All these things fall under this, the integrity, you know, and even the people aspect of what we do, from clients to your employees to everybody. The, the, the way you relate, the way you build the teamness of your, well, I call it teamness, I don't know, but the way you build your team with, with beyond just on the paper, one plus one is equal to two, this plus this, is beyond that, you build a relationship, you grow, and then you have people who will literally die for what you are doing. Then you can, you can progress. So, um, those are maybe the lessons I have learned. I was also asked to um, speak briefly on the elephant in the room because I'm a married mother of three boys, um, so I have, other professions beyond the beyond the architecture and uh, yes it's it's it can be challenging but thankfully um, we have uh, you have to take a lot of help like today is their day and I'm coming to talk so they have to come because I'm for them today but I mean this is a it's, it's it's a matter of fact you you can't at the time you are building your career that's when you are also making babies so. You either do it or you don't. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, for us, and it helped also maybe that myself, I was in this position even when I started, because I started out when I had my first one, and uh, I kind of grew everything around accommodating this lifestyle. So I can have my babies caught in the office, and then I can still work. Or now we had, what, four pregnant women recently, 
It's left to the last one to pop. But at the end, we accommodated. <laughs> we, <laughs> we accommodate and we try to make things flexible so that because you're having children doesn't mean you can't work. You can still, you can still work. It's, it's, it's a matter of fact. <laughs> you don't. So anyway, um, I think I'll end here. And uh, thank you very much for calling on me. <clears throat> Thank you very much.